Hi class, welcome back. And we are gonna get started in our next module after exam number two. And we're gonna begin by talking about the California Gold Rush. And we've already been talking about it a little bit. I mean, we've talked about it within the context of Native American populations. We've talked about it within the context of the California population and the fact that it started during the Mexican period of California history right at that cusp when California was becoming part of the United States as the result of the Mexican-American War. And um, it's interesting to note that um, on the eve of the gold rush in 1848, California's non-Indian population was just 12,000 people, 12,000 people. By 1850, California's population had grown to 93,000 people, 93,000 people. So that is a huge increase in just a two-year span of time. 73% of that population was between 20 and 40 years old. So that was a young population coming into the state, and 92% of that population was male. So it was very much disproportionately a male population. San Francisco was the major hub um, where things were going to transform very quickly. And in San Francisco in 1860, the population was 57,000. And in 10 years, the population um, had nearly doubled at 150,000. So it was a major era of transformation, and it was extremely unique in many, many ways. So I'm going to talk in this lecture, which is very short, um, but I, I like to talk about some of the unique aspects of the California Gold Rush, just so that we can get a sense of how really strange this particular uh, phenomenon is, and how in many ways it really is the thing that shapes the state uh, moving forward uh, and makes it a, a very unique place. So the first thing we're going to look at here is a map. And for those of you that know me, you know I like maps. Um, and you will see here um, the locations of the California gold mines. So as you can see, there are quite a few of them, 13,500 historic California gold mines. Um, if you look right here, this is the location of the discovery uh, by John Marshall of gold. Um, so that's where it takes place. And then you can see that the, there's this huge cluster of gold mines um, in this area. This is the Sierra Nevada. But there are also some other locations down here in the south, not nearly as um, as many, but of course uh, Joshua Tree was a hot spot as well in some of these other areas. Um, these southern mines, you didn't get nearly as much competition. Um, these southern mines were oftentimes um, mined by uh, Native American miners, uh, sometimes Mexican miners coming up from Mexico, um, sometimes California miners. Um, that's not to say that there were no Anglo miners down here. It's just that the majority of the Anglo miners would have been found in these uh, northern regions. And the reason for that is, well, here's Sacramento right here, right? And then you come over here, here's San Francisco. Um, and so people would, you know, sail to San Francisco, get off of the boat. I already talked about how many of them would have abandoned their vessels there. Um, and then you would be able to take these um, rivers up to uh, Sacramento. And from there, you could, you know, that you would take these river ferries up to Sacramento. And then from there, you would take a horse or a wagon or whatever out here to uh, the gold fields. So down here is sort of the southern part of the Sierra gold mining country that's in Mariposa. Um, so this gives you a sense of, of how widespread it was um, and where the majority of the mining activity was taking place.
So California had millions, uh, what would be today billions of dollars in gold that came out of it in just a very short period of time. Um, but you can see here, this is an image of what uh, the largest gold nugget ever found in California um, looks like. It's 109 pounds of gold uh, found in 1869 in Sierra Buttes. Um, and it was found by five mining partners. And most of these big gold nuggets were melted down and would have been um, you know, converted into coins or something like that. So it would be a more practical um, way to um, cash in, so to speak, on your wealth. Uh, you might also take it to a bank and then the bank might weigh it and then the, the bank would give you a currency in exchange. Um, and then you would, uh, and then the bank itself would melt down the gold. I mentioned last time that there was a mint, a currency mint that opened up in San Francisco for the purposes of making gold um, coins. And so that's where a lot of this gold went. Um, but you can still find these big nuggets occasionally if you go to um, mining museums up in mining country extra credit if you go up there you want to check it out although never mind I guess the, the museums would be closed right now but um, but yeah they have these um, gold country uh, museums that you can go and still see these you know opulent displays with these big gold nuggets and people still do uh, mine for gold out there in gold country using uh, very similar techniques that they used back in the gold rush. You know, they used the sloughs and the dredges and things like that to extract things, mostly from the uh, rivers and creeks in the Sierras. So the other thing to understand about um, Gold Rush California is that things were extremely expensive. I mean, you really had to be a successful either merchant or miner or entertainer or something in order to be able to pay these types of prices. Um, now, keep in mind that everything was inflated, right? So no matter what you did, you would make more money than um, what you would expect today so but look at these prices ten dollars per pound for beef that's during the gold rush that would be two hundred and eighty dollars a pound for beef today um, again I, I think I mentioned this before three dollars each um, so 84 for a dozen um, you know blanket five dollars so that would be the equivalent of a hundred and forty dollars today so things were very um, expensive and it created almost like this strange sense of, of uh, economy and money. And, and people noted this um, as being one of the strangest things about coming to California is, you know, all of a sudden everything is inflated. I mean, the prices are inflated, but what you're making in, in California is also more because the uh, economy was basically saturated with all of this gold and this wealth. Okay, um, and this is one of, I think, one of the most interesting um, aspects of California history, and that's the impact that the California gold rush in this era had on women. Um, women in the California Gold Rush had really interesting roles, um, and there was different types of roles depending upon who you were, um, and some of it had to do with race and class, but not necessarily. Um, so there were a lot of exceptions to that, and, um, and that's, I think, what makes it so interesting. Um, one thing we can say for certainty is that women in Gold Rush, California had opportunities that women did not have elsewhere. Um, and in some cases, the gender imbalance um, allowed for opportunities to open up for women to get extremely rich. Um, that was not true for all women. Um, some women, such as Lola Montez and uh, Juanita, 
Um, Lola Montez, who you see pictured there in this image, um, was a famous performer. And she, even though she was um, very powerful in her own right and she was able to make a lot of money, um, she was really shunned um, by um, some of the uh, more proper society or whatever because she would perform this famous spider dance where she would, and we don't have any images of it or pictures of it, but if you click on this link right here, um, you can see a recreation of what the spider dance may have looked like um, at the time that it was performed by Lola. Um, the, the recreation dance is done uh, by performers in a, in a gold um, town and uh, it's basically recreated through eyewitnesses accounts of what Lola Montez's dance looked like. So even though Lola was able to make quite a bit of money as an entertainer, as I said, she was very much shunned by a lot of the more proper um, society um, and in many ways demonized um, because of her ability to uh, make money and live independently. Juanita, on the other hand, is a different story. Uh, Juanita's story is much sadder and more tragic. Um, so Juanita was um, living in a gold rush town and um, she was recovering, I guess, from a 4th of July party um, and she was with her husband um, and a man sort of busts into her, um, her living uh, quarters and is, I think, intoxicated. And he, anyway, he demands money for, um, from her, um, accusing her basically of being a prostitute. And um, she's so like, you know, offended by this that she kills the man. Um, but I mean, he had bust into her, her house and he was being very aggressive. Um, and so she is, she's tried and she's hung for this crime. Um, and it shows like, it shows a lot of different things, but it shows like sort of this law, lawlessness that existed, um, you know, that the fact that women, um, in many cases, Juanita being a woman of Mexican descent, you know, she was probably discriminated against from the very beginning. Um, the man that she had killed was an Anglo minor, so that made things more complicated. So even though, like I said, the gold rush did offer opportunities for some women, um, for others, you know, it could be very tricky um, because you did have to live in a very harsh male dominated environment. And if you stood up for yourself, uh, depending upon who you were, um, you could be severely punished for doing so. Um, and then moving on to talk about um, two of the gold rushes, really um, interesting success stories when it comes to women. Um, a woman by the name of Ah Toy, who was a prostitute, a Chinese prostitute living in San Francisco, who became the madam of a brothel and became extremely um, rich, uh, basically by um, servicing, you know, or, or running her brothel in um, San Francisco. And I'm going to post actually an article about Autoy and sort of her remarkable journey. Um, and it's especially remarkable because she was Chinese um, and Chinese faced so much discrimination um, during this time period. Um, and she was able to really hold her own. Um, the same is true for Mary Ellen Pleasant, who you can find out more about by clicking on this YouTube uh, link. Mary Ellen Pleasant was an African-American woman um, who traveled to San Francisco. She helped um, slaves on the Underground Railroad. Um, she worked at, at a, boarding, a boarding house. She owned a boarding house. Um, she owned a restaurant, um, all very successful businesses. And she ends up becoming very rich as a result of her business endeavors here in San Francisco. And, for an African-American woman or a Chinese woman to experience these types of economic opportunities, it was almost unheard of, completely unusual for the rest of the country um, outside of these uh, mining regions. So um, the gold rush and women are a really interesting story. 
Um, and again, if you are interested in this um, moving forward and you want to write your paper, for example, on these stories, um, I think that this would make a great research topic. Um, so again, look for the article that I will be posting on Autoy um, so that you can um, get a sense of who this woman was. And if you have any questions about this material, feel free to drop in at Zoom office hours, or you can always send me an email or a post on the discussion board on Canvas. Thanks. Have a good day.